Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Viable probability plotting of right sensor data on Microsoft Excel. In this video, we will have a quick overview of the types of live data that is complete, right sensor, interval sensor, and left sensor. We will also share a link to our video on probability plotting of complete data. This video is about probability plotting of right sensor data. We will explain the steps to perform this. We have already released a video for viable probability plotting of right sensor data, but on Minitab software. However, in this video, we will explain the procedure on Microsoft Excel with an illustration example. Let us look at the types of data. If exact time to failure of each component is known, we can call it as complete data. When we know the time at which the component is running and not failed, we can call it right sensor data. So the three components shown here have not failed and are still running at times T1, T2 and T3. So these are all right sensor data. Let us now look at left sensor data. In the left sensor data, exact time to failure is not known, but it fails within a known time range from the start time. For example, let us say there is a component which has failed at a given time but we don't know exactly when it failed from the start time. Similarly, for the second component also, we don't know exactly when it failed. And for the third component also, it failed at a certain time, but we don't know exactly when it failed from the start time. Another type of data is interval sensor data. In this type of data, exact time to failure is not known but failure occurs within a known time range. It is very important to understand the type of data because the procedure depends on the type of data. Before watching this video, you should be familiar with probability plotting procedure of complete data. Please watch our video on this subject if you have not watched it earlier. Link to this video is provided in the description of this video. Procedure for Viable Probability Plotting of Right Sensor Data Now let us understand the steps to perform probability plotting of right sensor data. Step number one is rank the data of failed as well as sensor items in the ascending order of time. Then calculate the rank increment for each failed item only using the formula shown later. This is where the procedure differs from that for complete data. Step number three is calculation of the mean order number of each failed item using the rank increment. Using the mean order number, calculate median rank of each failed item only. Step number four, plot time to failure versus median rank of the failed item on viable probability paper as was explained in the earlier video for plotting of complete data. Assess the fit and calculate the parameters if data reasonably fit on the straight line. This step is similar to the procedure shown in our video on Weibull probability plotting of complete data. We will explain the procedure with an application illustration. 10 components were tested for a particular application. Data is shown in the table below. F stands for failure while as S stands for survivor. Perform probability plotting and estimate distribution parameters. The first step is to sort the data of the failures as well as survivors in the ascending order which is shown in the next table to the right. Now let us perform the calculations on Microsoft Excel. I have arranged the data in the ascending order here as shown in the previous slide 
and I have also added rank J from 1 to 10. Now there is an additional column that you will see here, units at risk. This is added for performing the calculations. For example, for the first failure at 150 hours, just prior to this 150 hours, how many units were at risk? It is 10. Similarly, at 560 hours, which is the next failure, 8 were at risk. At 800 hours, 7 were at risk and so on. We will use the units at risk number for performing the calculations. The failed items have been marked with red color for easy identification. I have shown the rank increment formula above the table. So this is the formula for rank increment. So rank increment is equal to n plus 1 minus previous mean order number divided by 1 plus units at risk. For the first item, the previous mean order number will be equal to 0. n is equal to 10, which is the total number of items. So n plus 1 for all the rows will be 11. So I now calculate the rank increment for the first one equal to 11 minus previous mean order number is 0 for the first item. I put a bracket here and divided by 1 plus units at risk. So I again put a bracket 1 plus now I use the number for units at risk. So for the first item the rank increment is 1. So the mean order number will be equal to previous mean order number plus the rank increment. Since the previous mean order number for the first item is 0, I say equal to 0 plus rank increment 1, which is equal to 1. And the median rank is used with the same formula, j minus 0.3 upon n plus 0.4. So I say equal to, now j instead of the rank, we will use mean order number. So we'll use 1, select the cell, minus 0.3 divided by n plus 0.4 will always be 10.4. So that gives me a median rank of 0 0.067. If I reduce the decimals, that will be equal to 0 0.067. If I convert that into percentage, it is about 7%, maybe 6.7%. Now I don't need to perform any calculation for the survivor. So I go to the third item, which has failed at 560 hours. So I will say rank increment equals n plus 1 will be 11 minus previous mean order number is now 1. I select 1 divided by 1 plus unit at risk. Again, I will select the cell in the unit at risk column. So that gives me a rank increment of 1.1111. I can reduce the decimals to maybe 2. Now the mean order number will be equal to previous mean order number plus the rank increment. So I select the previous mean order number plus rank increment which is now a fraction. So it is 2.11 and the median rank can be calculated using the same formula. So the median rank becomes 17.4. For the third item, again I calculate the rank increment equal to n plus 1 is 11 minus previous mean order number now is 2.11 divided by 1 plus units at risk will be 7 the cell that's equal to again the same rank increment and now i add the mean order number i calculate the mean order number equal to previous mean order number plus the rank increment so it's 3.22 so the rank median rank so the median rank will be equal to 28.1%. I don't need to calculate for again the next survivor. For the failure at 1720, I, again I calculate uh, the rank increment. N plus 1 is 11 minus previous mean order number is 3.22 divided by 1 plus units at risk will be 5, the cell. So it is 1.29. I reduce the decimal 
and now I calculate the mean order number for this 3.22 previous mean order number plus the rank increment 1.3 calculate the median rank using the formula 40.6 percent and the last failure has occurred at 5230 so I calculate the rank increment as 11 minus previous mean order number 4.52 divided by 1 plus units at risk is 2 now and now I finally calculate the mean order number for this last failed item previous mean order number is 4.52 plus 2.16 and the median rank is So we have calculated all the median ranks for the failed items. What remains now is to plot the hours versus the median rank. But we will plot this only for the failed items. The procedure is exactly identical to our previous video. Let us now plot this data on Webull probability plotting paper. A two-cycle Webull probability plotting paper is shown here. The reason why we have selected this two cycle paper is observe the data that the minimum hours is 150 and the maximum hours is 6890. So if we start at 100, let us say we start at 100. Then the next red line, the first cycle completion will be at 1000 and the second cycle completion will be at 10,000. So all data will fit in the range of 100 to 10,000. The first plotting point is at 150 hours and the median rank is 6.7%. 150 hours is between 100 and 200 so which is about middle of the first two lines on the x-axis at 6.7 percent observe on the y-axis that there is 5 percent here and then there is 10 percent here i am just marking with red circles so 6 will be the next line above 5 and 6.7 will be little between the two lines of 6 and 7 So approximately the point will be somewhere here. The second point is at 560 hours and the median rank is 17.4. 560 will be 200, 300, 400, 500 and 600. So 560 will be somewhere here and 17.4% will be between 10 and 20 on the upper side somewhere here this is the second plotting point the third plotting point is 828.1 percent 800 is still below 1000 so so this is 800 oh i'm sorry the second form and 28.1% is the, so it is between 20 and 30 and on the near 30, it will be somewhere here. The third plotting point is at 1720 and 40.6, 1720 is now crosses 1000. So, 2000 it is between 1000 and 2000 remember because the second point is remember it is 2000 so 1720 will be somewhere in between uh, towards 2000 and 40.6 will be 40 yeah it will be somewhere here Let us now plot the fifth point which has got time to fail as 5230 
and the median rank calculated is 61.3 so 5230 will be 1000 here 2000 here 3000 4000 5000 and 200 and 61.3 will be just below the eta value which is 63.2 percent so just below that now we have to see whether a straight line fits through these five points. So I will choose a scale and I will just try to fit a straight line in these five points. It will never be a perfect straight line. So I say, okay, this may be about the line that may fit into this. So this is the line that I have fitted. After fitting a straight line through the plotted point, the next step is to estimate beta parameter for which I must draw a line parallel to the fitted line but passing through the 63% point for which I have just moved the scale and draw the line. So I must draw a line parallel to the fitted line passing through this marked point and read the beta parameter in the scale above for which I can see that the beta parameter is somewhere here. So the beta parameter is close to 0.8 but slightly less than 0.8. We can say that the beta parameter is about 0.78. And the next step is to estimate eta parameter which is the scale parameter. So the shape is 0.78. Now let us estimate the scale parameter eta. For estimating eta, I must find out a point of intersection between the fitted line and the eta line which is faint on the graph and draw a perpendicular from that point. So I need to draw a perpendicular. So if I draw a line from the intersection point to the x-axis and read the eta parameter from the x-axis, it is 3000, 4000. So eta can be estimated at about 4000. So the Weibull equation will be reliability at time t is equal to e to the power minus t upon eta is 4000 raised to the power 0.78. Please note that the shape parameter beta is 0.78 which means that the failure rate is decreasing and the failures are likely to be due to manufacturing defects. We can also estimate the beaten life. For that, we need to look at the 10% line, the red line. So we mark the intersection of the 10% line with the plotted line and again draw a line perpendicular to the, the x-axis from this intersection point and read the beaten life from the x-axis which is about somewhere here. So the beaten life is between 200 and 300 and it's about let us say 230 so I can write down that the beaten life is 230 these are estimates from the graph and in the software you may get more accurate values let us do a recap in this video we had a quick overview of the types of filler data that is complete right sensor left sensor and interval sensor. Then we had an overview of the probability plotting procedure for right sensor data. And then finally we illustrated this procedure with an application example on Microsoft Excel. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on Reliability Engineering, Six Sigma and Quality Engineering.